So what's your name? My name is Eduardo. Okay, where are you coming from? And I come from Spain originally, uh, but I live in Paris. Okay, cool. What are you going to talk about? And I'm going to talk about Beyond HTML with you. Awesome. Okay. Okay, all to you. Just need to make sure to have the screens correctly. What's going on? Yep. Okay, so Vue has proved um, being really great to build web applications. Uh, but what if I told you, I mean, you already know, but it's possible to, be, to go beyond that and build all kinds of applications, not only web applications. So today I'm going to show you three different components I've built to render other things that are not HTML, uh, but could benefit from uh, view reactivity and declarative view systems. So my name is Eduardo. Uh, you can find me around as, as Postval. I'm a member of the core team. I organize a meetup in Paris, and there is a lot of things, but I don't really have the time to go through that because they only have eight minutes. The first pattern I want to show you is data providers. Um, so data providers is a kind of abstraction, a component that allows you to abstract some logic, but allows you to retrieve some information to abstract that logic, keep that logic uh, hidden in that box, that component. So for example, you can create some state animation with Spring. Um, so this is a real component, Motion, it's called Motion, it's a library called ViewMotion, and you can provide the values, so this is the prop you see at the top, value, selected values, and in a scope, in a um, slow scope, you will retrieve the interpolated values that make the animation go. So you only have to worry about what is the actual value at the moment you are building your application. So you can just do the classic things with you. Mm, these dot um, selected values equals something else. In this scenario, selected values is an array. So, uh, and in this example, which is an actual real, uh, real world example, it's rendering a graph um, with some bar plots. And the selected values is just the data set you're looking at. So if you change a data set, motion is going to make sure that the values change and that the bar plot animates. I have another example, though, uh, because you may be familiar, familiar with the lazy Sudoku. Uh, who is familiar with this example? It's in the docs, built by Chris. <laughs> uh, so I read up this example to use um, the motion, for example. And instead of having a transition effect with CSS, um, it's using a spring. Springs hands have some um, benefits uh, that CSS transition do not have. And one of them is that you can interrupt the transition in the middle and it still looks natural, to the point that I can keep pressing the enter button and it keeps moving around like crazy. So this is one other example. But we can go further. We can do declarative promises. So we can serve promises as components. We can let the component handle the fetch, um, not the, the fetching, but the resolution of the promise. And by using some scope flows, you can you can decide what to, what to display. And the HTML, the HTML, sorry, the code is not that complicated, actually. Um, so you have a prop, which is a promise uh, that comes from the parent, of course. And then you hold the data, which is going to be, is this promise resolved? Is there, what is the success data? What is the error, if there is any? And then in the render, which is the interesting part, you're just going to render um, a scope slot. And you're going to switch between the scope slots depending on the state you are um, for that promise. And of course, if you want to relaunch the promise, you can use a watch on the promise, and then you can see there is the handling of the promise, the state, the result, the resolution, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, here are some existing libraries. Um, <laughs> I know you're going to tell me the <laughs> three of them are mine, but I couldn't find any other <laughs> around. So if you have anything, I'm, I'm looking forward to see what you do. And there is a recent article by Adam Weden, Weden, I think I'm pronouncing that right, uh, explaining exactly this pattern. OK, into most interesting things. What about sound and music? You can also uh, build a component that is called a sound, where you have um, the source, you get the image, uh, the, image the, the sound file that you pass down to the, um, to the sound component, which is going to load, play the sound, et cetera, et cetera. And you can benefit from the reactivity system from view to bind some props, like the rate of the, of the sound. And you can even combine the two things, like the, the motion component I was showing before. So you end up with many very funny things. Now, the demo is a bit um, long. I think I have to toggle up the volume, probably. Let me show you that. Uh, what else could be here? I think it's this one. Cannot hear anything as well at the moment. 
way too. Can I have something with the sound? Gerard? <laughs> no, the, the sound is, is <laughs> the sound is going down there, but now I just removed it, but just sing. Just sing. <laughs> oh, come on. Um, <laughs> okay, I thought there was some sound. Well, let's, yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> okay, so, um, you can check this on your phone. I will send you the, the things afterwards. But basically, you have a sound. Uh, you can control the rate of the sound uh, with the prop. So this is classic view. <laughs> I think the only people who can figure that just in front, uh, which is the same. Um, and then you can go, you can go to, with the spring. And with the spring, you can make the value kind of follow along. So you can see at the, at the bottom, you have a value that follows along. And the spring has some, some um, configuration that makes the value change differently. So if I go, is it, are you trying to make the sound go? Well, so <laughs> basically uh, you will have to do with the value and here later. But you can change the value so it, it changes more, I mean, how it, it oscillates. So you can create a, a very funny drunk effect as I like to call it, uh, but you won't hear it, which is a shame because it's really funny. Um, <laughs> But you will see that the, the small bar uh, below the other one is infinite, indefinitely oscillating. And this is going to create, this creates this drunk effect. OK, so let's go into the 3D, um, 3D one. Uh, I'm really mad at Partig right now because he told me there was sound. Um, so the last one is about Canvas and WebGL. You can create um, some scenes with, by only using HTML if you create the components for it, uh, which make the whole thing uh, easier to, to, to create, and you can benefit from use the Creative system. So for example, for those who are not familiar with 3D or 3GS, the renderer is um, the container that will handle the display for in the browser. So it could be a CSS renderer, a Canvas renderer, and a WebGL renderer. This one is a WebGL renderer. And inside you have a scene. The scene is what is going to be displayed at a time, so you can only have one single scene at, at a time. And inside of that scene, you have many elements, many entities, like a camera, an ambient light, a spotlight, a cube, or a list of cubes here. Now, how, how does the code look like? You import the scene from 2GS because you want to use that, and we use inject and provide, which is a very useful feature for these kind of things. So we inject the renderer because we need that as a scene, because the renderer was wrapping the scene. And we provide ourselves the scene to the other components, the cube, the camera, and the lights, because they need, they need us. And we make sure when we render that we render the children, because otherwise uh, you're pretty much saying, telling to view not to render any of the cubes on the camera so nothing will appear. The cube is going to inject the scene and is going to um, create a geometry, a material, and the mesh, which is the actual cube that you see. Uh, it combines both things. And you can add that to the, to the scene, as you can see at the bottom, and destroy it, so remove it from the scene the, when the component is removed from the DOM. Now, how does it look like? There we go. So this is a scene. Um, you cannot see the things at the, at the top. You can check this in your phone if you want. But you can add new cubes. I cannot see anything. You can add new cubes um, to the scene. And because we are using HTML to render, I mean, the, the viewer, the activity system, it works pretty well. Uh, you can also shuffle them, uh, but here it looks like they're randomizing the color. Now, if you wrap the whole thing with motion, with the component that you showed you before, and it's just two more lines, it completely changes the behavior because they will transition between one state to the other without any code to do. And you can interrupt the animation in the middle. You can add more curves if you want. And it also works with the camera, so you can have these DZ effects as well. You can remove curves. You can check it out if you want. Uh, the code is really is like two or three more lines. You have the cubes. You wrap the thing in a, in a motion, and that's it. Because it's going to, to see the position, and it's going to make the transition automatically. That's how the motion component works. Of course, uh, I'm cheating a bit here because I'm not telling you how to make it reactive. Uh, you have to actually add the props, watch the props, and, and you have to repeat with all the entities. 
Some existing libraries, uh, there is an integration about Vue with 3GS. I didn't use it for the demo because I wanted to highlight something very simple. Uh, but you have also Vue Canva, which is for canvas drawing. I have uh, Google Maps, um, which is for Google Maps, so you can imagine. Uh, I hope you learned something. Hit me around if you have any questions, and thanks for your attention.